What were your impressions when you first saw the first digital cameras that were digital SLRs, that is, that were capable of shooting video? I'm thinking of the Canon cameras, which was a few years ago now, I think. Yeah, 2008. Well, I, I think like everybody at the time, I'd seen um, Reverie, you know, Vincent Laferay's um, first uh, movie shot with a 5D Mark II. Um, and everyone was amazed by this. And a friend of mine, uh, he called me and said, Clive, you've got to get your hands on one of these 5D Mark IIs. And uh, I said, yeah, but it's not enough to just have the camera. I need a project. And so I looked around at the people I was working with and uh, Roxandra Lincic was doing a, a show at the... Raphael Gallery at the V&A, which is, if you've ever seen it, is the most incredible location you can imagine. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe I'll talk to Canon and just take it down and see what happens. And uh, so I talked to my contact, Frankie Jim, at Canon UK at the time. And even then, Frankie and I had to put together a proposal, which was sent to Europe. And they must have liked it because I think two days later, a 5D, a pre-production 5D Mark II arrived at my agent's uh, or manager's office in Putney. And then I took it to this fashion show and um, I took all my lenses. I didn't even use a tripod, I used a monopod. And um, no sound. Uh, and to give you an example of how early this was, um, the models didn't even know I was shooting moving image. They'd not seen a stills camera shoot moving image. Um, so I was holding the camera on them. And we then took the the rushes, or the, you know, the, the, the exposures, you know, I mean, we call them rushes now, a moving image. But, and there was, a, in fact, there was a director I've worked with quite a lot subsequently. And she, she's been in um, filmmaking for a long, long time. And she, I cannot, her reaction was fantastic. Um, and w I had a crowd of people, maybe 20 or 30 people around the laptop as the footage was coming off. And I, basically what I was shooting in, I was shooting in very low light with single light sources, you know, you know bouncing off these beautiful Raphael light sort of images. And, and uh, everything that I could do with a stills camera, I was doing with movement. And um, we used 14 mils, we used long lenses, and we moved all around the show, because the show was repeated four times through the day. And of course that meant I could cut it as one piece. The funny thing was it was a personal project. Uh, the 5D wasn't even out. It came out, I think, um, a little bit later on. And then all my clients wanted to move an image. Almost every single one, as a result of this one little 30 second film which we'd made because a mate of mine said you really got to go and try that camera and what was the inspiration for the moving portraits as you describe them that you've been working on recently the moving portrait idea is to is to somehow try and encapsulate the personality of a person um, w using movement um, and the the one that we've just completed or recently comp completed uh, fashion designer Henry Holland we interviewed him for an hour and a half and we asked him some very searching questions and he was great and he gave me very honest answers lovely guy very very honest very I uh, didn't held nothing back whatsoever and so I then took that and uh, and then looked at pertinent questions like uh, he talks about being bullied at school and how that being bullied for, for being gay at the age of I think it was 14 or, or maybe even earlier and how the imp how that impacted on him and the impact l that that had on him in later life and so I was interested in 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 in, in those aspects of him and 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 somehow wanted to visualize that so uh, so that that that's what we do with the moving portrait idea we sort of interview people or, or meet with them and then collaborate with them and try and dig beneath the skin a little bit and um, you know, maybe have a narrative, maybe not.
Are there always big productions that you do? Because you mentioned to me before about you know the numbers of people that are involved <laughs> on some of these. Yeah, they, they 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 sort of look like big productions, but the reality is, I think we shot a perfume commercial in Paris uh, three four years ago, and it, it's all incredibly exotic. And yet, I was I was sleeping sharing a room with my friend Billy, who has been with me for well, since I've been, I don't know eight ten years. Billy's a great photographer in his own right, a great, great uh, lighting assistant. And uh, I had to suffer his snoring for, oh God. In fact, it was so bad, his snoring, that I ended up carrying my mattress into the corridor and sleeping in the corridor. And yet, when you see the film, there's this big, it's an incredibly exotic, you know, amazing, you know, this Paris ballet, the Paris Opera, and we've got these incredible ballerinas. But behind the scenes, the reality of making some of these films is, is quite different. What about worst shoot experiences? I was asked to shoot on the set of Downton Abbey. Uh, I think it was season two. I knew nothing about Downton Abbey at the time, so I did my research, watched the entire series, first series, really enjoyed it. And I think it was either weeks or months of preparation had gone into this. Uh, and it was a big article, it was a cover. And I don't do much editorial work, but it was a cover and a seven page piece for you magazine and so I pitched up and um, uh, I started to shoot and uh, and then inexplicably they wrapped and I just thought hang on what's going on and you know this was all organized and as films do and TV do you know they things had changed and uh, they'd finished for the day so as a photographer and a filmmaker, you have to sort of use your head and think, well, you know, I still, I mean, for me personally, I wanted to de deliver, not just for the client. I wanted to come away with good shots. What, when am I going to get the opportunity to be on the set of this? It's an amazing location, you know, High Clear Castle, incredible light. And, you know, and the, 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 the actors were, were tremendous. So um, I spoke with the, the head of PR and said, look, you know, this is unacceptable. And in a nice way, I was very diplomatic. I didn't sort of throw my dummy out of the pram or stamp my feet. And she said, yeah, sure. And, and um, she saw my point of view. And um, then we got access to the, 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 the girls who played the three daughters and one or two others. And, and again, once again, Billy and I, my light and assistant, we did a whole number with the natural light. And we shot these... What I would still consider now some of my best portraits, certainly on a on a film set or a TV set. Um, but the irony was, or is, that all this effort and all this work, they never published them. They just wanted the behind the scenes stuff. With more and more photographers now getting into shooting video, what are the kind of pitfalls that you see people falling into when they make that transition? Um, I think. It sounds really ridiculous, but movement. Um, I, w I recently saw some interviews that were produced by a photographer, and you could see it was a photographer producing them. Uh, everything was just static. It was beautifully lit, it was all very static. And with the conscious, I made a conscious decision early on that I was going to, uh, you know, use the medium because the medium allows you to move. You've got a slider here. Um, you know, you're working with different, um, you know, zooms. So, you know, you, your subject matter can move, you can move. Um, so movements really, you know, dolly track, um, sliders, all, all that kind of stuff, moving lights. So I think uh, in, initially one of the difficulties can be um, not injecting enough movement in. I mean, yeah, of course you can put too much movement in. Um, but you can you can that's a that's a, 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 a very simple mistake um, moving on from that I think editing is very difficult um, just as it is as a photographer I mean how many great photographers any photographer uh, are great editors very few you know, um, it, it is one of the hardest things to learn and uh, there are filmmakers who are all, who are editors. I mean, people come in to move an image from you know from writing, from editing, uh, from, from all different directions. I came into it from uh, stills, and uh, um, so, uh, but also as a designer too. So I you know, look at framing things and so on and so forth. So I think everybody brings something different 
to it. But for me personally, um, I made a decision earlier on, uh, or early on, that I was going to work with an editor, and I'm I kind of stuck by that now because my editor, who I work with uh, for nearly everything that I do, he understands me, I understand him, and he brings a tremendous level of not just skill but creativity to a project. So collaboration is is key and this is what I say to students I just want to surround myself with very very talented people and not just talented people but people you get on with because um, you know when you're making short films or even if you are shooting stills it's really important that you you know you all get on and and the longer you work together the easier it gets you know it's like setting this lighting up now I, w I would just walk in and it would be ready because we all know how we work um, and this, and I, now I've started to get film people coming into the business and that can be quite unionised so that's a whole new experience because um, they want to charge for working at lunchtime, they want to charge for working at night so we have to sort of manage that you know, as production because as photographers as you know we will work like 24 hours and just to get the job done so but they bring other skills um, and one of the I mean from photographers going to film one of the one of the biggest challenges I found other than the ones I've just discussed is handing your camera over to somebody else and that's probably the single biggest challenge because you're so used to being the person in control but collaboration that's you know bringing other people in and 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 working off other people and that's what I like about the moving portrait project um, the fact that I'm gonna I'm now trying to extend that to collaborate with after effects artists or illustrators or typographers and maybe try and mix it up a bit in my own personal work and hopefully you know with with commission work too with your experience having worked as a designer the um moving into stills and then doing the moving image. What would you say the future is for the industry at the moment? Right, the, the future, I mean, well, the industry right now, I think is in a, it, well, for a while now, it's been in a, a state of, I mean, some might call it turmoil, some might call it flux. Um, I think there are many, many photographers, um, say of our generation, who uh, haven't embraced moving image and are probably now uh, thinking what, where's the work gone? Um, because you only have to look at, um, I mean, first of all, look at you, you know, your, your, your mobile phone, your iPad. I mean, I know I'm saying probably the obvious here, but everything involves movement. You know, even even um, shop fronts, uh, point of purchase, which is why I've been working with 4K, because 4K, uh, it, it's giving you this ultra high definition, and you, you point of purchase or a shop front. I mean, imagine a shop front. I've not seen it. I'm sure somebody must be doing it. But imagine a shop front, a rear projection in 4K. Um, it, if you get that projection right, if it was on Oxford Street, say or Sloan Street, or wherever it might be, Bond Street, and it's at night, it, it's going to be approximating reality. I mean, it's not true reality. Apparently, the boffins say that 8K is indistingu indistinguishable from uh, true reality, but 4K is still pretty impressive. In fact, it's so impressive. And again, this is a controversial subject, but we've pulled very, very acceptable stills from 4K. And, and I'm talking about 34 meg to 50 meg uh, TIFF files. And I've printed them on, on, you know, on, the, on the big Canon printer to uh, anything up to a meter. Now you have to shoot in a very, very controlled way. Uh, you've got to be careful with movement and you've got to think about it. But it is possible to draw you know, stills from moving image. And for me personally, uh, this year's been a, a very good year 
and some of the reasons for that are that I've been working on these personal projects, the, you know, the moving portrait project. So yes, there's been I've been fortunate to collaborate with Show Studio, Nick Knight, and these people, and and they in turn have have, have created awareness to these projects through their social media footprint, Henry Holland, and so on and so forth with all the retweets. Um, but working with new technologies uh, is is very important. So I'm an early adopter of of this stuff. And um, and so with filmmaking, it's what I mean. Let me give you the example of the recent project that we that we just produced uh, for Intel and Asus, who I'd worked with. In fact, the 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 the, the inspiration for moving portraits came from a series of moving portraits of Don McCullen, and uh, which I'd done for Intel several years ago. And Intel came back this year, the art director from that project, and. Initially, it was can can you shoot the global ad campaign uh, for a new phone? It's great, yeah, lovely. You know, love to. Oh, and by the way, um, we want you to shoot some moving imagery. And as the project evolved, it sort of the the stills were really important. They were key visuals that were needed to be seen globally, and I think there was something like five or six key visuals. But at the same time, the moving image became very, very you know much more important. And, and to the and, and then it reached a point. Well, actually, Clive, we want you to direct and shoot the global ad campaign and the stills campaign. And in historically, what would happen is a director would um, create, you know, write the treatment and shoot the, the 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 commercial, and a photographer would shoot the stills campaign. Well, of course, now what I guess a lot of people are doing, not just me, but we're, because we've come from photography to filmmaking and you know we've developed our skills as filmmakers we hope um, we can do the two so there is definitely a future in that but it's being able under one roof you know one production company to offer all of this you know the write the film treatment direct the commercial shoot the commercial and the, the stills are shot at the same time that commercial is shot so there's a synergy between the moving image and the still image a perfect synergy between it all and that's now become a, a really big uh, selling point with the production company that represent me and sometimes we're asked to shoot um, to do, I'm asked to direct and shoot uh, commercials and I say oh by the way you know we could shoot the stills and oh really and yeah, we can shoot it in 4K or we can shoot it in 12 bit and we can do this and we can do that. So new uh, exotic te uh, technologies and using those technologies is very, very important. But then going back to the collaboration, the mixing it up with great sound design, you know, great typography, great After Effects artists, you know, bringing as many skills. I mean, people in music, are, I mean, people in film, but people in music have been doing it for years. I mean, reinventing themselves all the time. So you know, hugely important, hugely important. Well, thank you very much, Clive, for allowing me to come up here and do the interview, and thank you for sharing your insights. Well, thanks for coming. It's been really enjoyable.